Ben Wurst. We're very excited to have Ben Wurst with us tonight. Um, ben is the probably the expert on ospreys in New Jersey. I know every time I talk to somebody in New Jersey about ospreys, they always bring up you, Ben. They always said you got to talk to Ben. He's the guy that knows uh, what's going on with the osprey population. So Ben's a celebrity in New Jersey. Believe it <laughs> I don't or know not. About that. <laughs> So Ben, why don't you introduce yourself yeah. and I'm going to hand over uh, the, the presentation and the training to Ben. Um, and so Ben, we're just again, very happy to have you here. And so I'll just going to turn everything over to Ben right now. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot for having me here. You know, uh, glad we can do this. Uh, so I've worked for Conserve Wildlife Foundation uh, since, you know, probably around 2006 or seven uh, part-time and I've been full-time with them since 2008. And over this whole time, I've worked with ospreys through New, Jer you know, in New Jersey, through a great partnership with the uh, Endangered Species Program, with Division of Fish and Wildlife, and uh, I started working with them as a seasonal employee uh, down in uh, southern New Jersey. And you know, with the state, a lot of the work that we did was, you know, basically just monitoring and managing them. And now more so, my um, role with Conserve Wildlife Foundation, we bring in private funding to do the same thing, uh, where we essentially have taken the burden away from the state to be able to, you know, put up the funds, uh, which were always pretty much lacking, uh, which I found from working with the state uh, with Ospreys, where now we can bring in our own money uh, through donations, grants, uh, and any other, you know, uh, sources to help, uh, you know, monitor Ospreys and, and provide nesting platforms for them as well, too. So one of the things that I was talk, talking to uh, Jen and, and Joe about, uh, you know, was just, uh, you know, for a number of years, you know, as, as I've worked to monitor and manage ospreys throughout the, the, the state, I mean, we've partnered with other smaller nonprofit organizations to kind of uh, keep tabs on, on the local ospreys in that area. And in Monmouth County uh, is a place where we've, we've pretty much been lacking some data uh, because the population has been growing and there's been no official monitors up there. I mean, historically, the state uh, used to conduct aerial surveys along the entire coast of New Jersey with a helicopter, and they don't do that anymore. So, you know, all of like, uh, you know, the Shrewsbury and Navistink uh, aren't covered anymore. And more recently, even uh, at Sandy Hook, one of the former uh, National Park Service employees there who used to monitor nests up there has left, and no one has monitored nests up there. Uh, at least last year, no one monitored nests. So, so I kind of reached out to, you know, form a better connection because I know you guys, you know, uh, you know, do work with ospreys up there with regards to, you know, installing nest platforms and, uh, you know, and, and just keep track of them. So this is just an opportunity for us to, to partner here and, you know, you know, see how ospreys are doing up there and, and have it counted uh, in our, our year end uh, reporting that we do on ospreys. Uh, so you know, so basically, uh, you know, I don't want to keep you all too long tonight because, uh, you know, like Joe said, it's a great, beautiful night, uh, you know, and and uh, I feel like we can definitely do some follow up, uh, you know, whether it's virtually or in the field up at Sandy Hook, uh, you know, in person. Uh, so you can kind of, uh, you know, you know, get some great uh, question and answers for me, you know, live and in person instead of uh, through a computer screen and with the birds as well too, because uh, there might be things where, you know, different behaviors that we see where then I can explain them uh, first person. So uh, I do have a presentation, which is my, you know, just general Osprey talk, uh, you know, and, and I don't want this just to be me blabbering the whole time. Uh, cause I'd like to blabber a lot. I mean, I could talk to you about ospreys for, for days, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, so I want this to kind of be, you know, a, a question answer type thing. If you have any questions of me, uh, you know, I'm happy to answer them. Even if you put them in the, in the chat as well, you know, I'll share my contact information after this as well. But tonight I just wanted to, you know, kind of go over a quick, a little bit about ospreys. I mean, I'm sure you guys probably are familiar with what an osprey is. Uh, go over how we monitor and manage them uh, with including their life cycle because it's pretty much centered around that and then uh, ways that that you guys can report your sightings um, and then I think maybe if we would you know uh, meet up in person uh, you know then we can go over more there in detail because there are lots of 
questions that might arise if no one has any experience, you know, watching Ospreys where you might not know what you're looking at. Uh, so, all right. So with that said, I'm going to start sharing my screen and I'll just bring up a PowerPoint here or Keynote because I'm on a Mac. All right. So skip this slide. All right. So, you know, Ospreys, you know, they're a large bird of prey and they're found along the coast. They build large stick nests. Uh, they forage on fish. So that's why they nest near water. And, uh, you know, many people confuse them with uh, eagles, of course, uh, or uh, some blackback gulls, uh, you know, so they just think they're like a shorebird or a gull. Uh, but when you see those big sharp talons and long legs, you of course uh, know that it's not a gull. But ospreys have a dark eye stripe. Uh, you can see that's one of their field marks to be able to, you know, tell the difference between an osprey and an eagle. And they always have their wings bent at an angle, as you can see here. So they're pretty much always bent at the wrist uh, when they're in flight. So, and even, you can even see with this individual here too, they're always slightly bent, uh, you know, at the wrist. And females are larger than males uh, and females have a, a more prominent necklace of brown feathers on their breasts. So that's how you can really tell the difference between the two besides their size. Uh, and then males are very uh, light on their breast as well. And they're, they're smaller. So, and I can even tell the difference not only by their size, but just the overall shape of their head and their legs. Uh, the thickness of their legs, and you could even just see it on this male right here. If you ever see banded birds or take pictures of ospreys, then you'll see that the bands on the males are just slightly big or loose because we use the same size band for both males and females, uh, which is a size eight federal band. And, uh, you know, it's meant to fit females when they're an adult and males, it's a little bit loose. So ospreys, you know, they love to nest over water. I mean, sites like this are magical to them, uh, you know, but they'll nest on almost anything they can uh, find, you know, that's channel markers, duck blinds, of course, osprey nest platforms that are built for them, uh, houses uh, and communication towers, uh, you name it, you know, boat lifts. Uh, this spring uh, has been a busy spring. Again, as usual, we know ospreys are back because we're just dealing with many different nest issues uh, throughout the state where they are nesting in places where we don't want them or nests are being destroyed. Uh, you know, so we're trying to do everything we can to protect these nests so they can raise young. So most ospreys in New Jersey nest on man-made structures like this one here, uh, which were designed specifically for ospreys uh, back in the 1960s. Uh, to replace uh, natural nest sites like trees and ospreys still nest in trees. Uh, so, uh, but these are, are just, these are a way to provide the most suitable nest site for an osprey away from disturbance that gives them protection from predators. Uh, so they're able to complete their life cycle. But like I said, they still do love nesting in trees. So some of these slides, this is a, a longer PowerPoint. Uh, I will definitely keep you here for a while if I go through all these, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll kind of touch on some things. And if anyone has any questions, you know, you could definitely, uh, you know, ask away. Uh, but ospreys are found worldwide uh, in New Jersey. They're pretty much found along the entire coastline. Uh, what I'll probably do is bring up even a better uh, Google Earth image, uh, where then I can click and zoom, and we can zoom in on some areas that you guys will specifically be monitoring. Uh, otherwise, the generic map on the right is, is you're like, what the heck, you know, like the, all those lines everywhere. Yeah, ospreys pretty much line our entire coastline. So during the nesting season, uh, one, of the, one of the great ways to really tell the difference between the sexes, uh, and this is just one of the things I've learned from working with them for so long, uh, and watching them on, on osprey camps too, which is another great way to learn more about ospreys. Like if you have time to waste, a huge time sink is watching osprey cams. You could spend hours uh, or days, you know, watching osprey cams. So it's just a great way to be able to learn more about them. So during the nesting season, the female pretty much stays on the nest or around the nest for the entire nesting season, even from right now on until the young fletch. And then it's only, you know, so that's usually like the first or second week in August when she finally starts leaving the nest. She'll go out and forage on her own. Uh, where then her young, uh, you know, need more food. So she has to go out and catch food. And she's also fattening up herself too, because she leaves on migration in August as well. But uh, during the entire nesting season, the male, uh, so he's on the right in this, in this picture here or this slide, 
uh, where you know he's flying around foraging, uh, and he does 100% of that during the nesting season. So and the female is pretty much dependent on the male's ability to find and catch prey to be able to you know, successfully produce young. Hey, so Ben, can I just ask you a question? Yeah. So I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, okay. so, uh, I think bald eagles, they sort of switch every now and then, the female and the male, they switch. Mm -hmm. You're saying that doesn't, that doesn't happen with ospreys, there's no switching where the male might come in and take care of the, the young for a little bit for the female to stretch her wings and, and fly yeah. away? He does. Yeah, the female does about 70% of the incubation okay. and, you know, brooding and, uh, you know, the, the nest duties. Uh, so he comes in only to give her a break when she's incubating uh, or, you know, caring for the young just to go and feed off the nest. Because when they have eggs, they don't feed on the nest unless they have to. They go, he comes in with the half-eaten fish, lands, then she takes it flies away, and that's when he gets to incubate for a little bit. So we'll see those incubation exchanges like that. Uh, but uh, she'll still stay like in the immediate area around the nest, though. She doesn't go and she won't go and forage. So and that's the that's 100% on the male. She'll only forage if she has to. You know, if the male, uh, you know, in, in their monogamous relationship, uh, you know, isn't doing his job, uh, then she'll have to go and forage to feed herself. For sure. So eventually she will give up on him. All right. So another picture here and, and some of these pictures, I might just say a couple words and just cruise through because I have tons of pictures in this uh, presentation. Uh, but uh, these are just some pictures uh, from a couple of different photographers. The one specifically on the left shows both the male and female in the nest. And just so you could see a little bit of the size difference between the two uh, and their plumage where you can see the male has uh, the the lighter breast where the female has the, the necklace of brown feathers. And that male at this nest is uh, exhibiting a behavior uh, called mantling. So that's where after a successful hunt, uh, he had his share of fish and he's not, he's not sharing with the female now. Uh, so this is where he guards it uh, from her. And it's basically uh, showing that this is a younger male osprey and uh, you know, he doesn't really know his role yet in their monogamous relationship uh, and is, is more evident in young adult males. Uh, so we've, we've actually seen this a lot at our osprey cam in Barnegat Light, uh, where the male last year hasn't returned yet. Usually he's always late to the game. He would have been 14 years this year, so we don't know if he's gonna survive. Uh, but, and this new male uh, is, uh, He's six years old and he was at the same nest last year trying to overtake the male and lost. Uh, but he's been back and, and it's a new female as well. So we have a totally new pair at this nest. Uh, so it's really interesting to watch and see what happens. But the young male has been trying to court this new female as well. And he's somewhat been you know, catching food for her, but not a lot. Uh, but he's also been seen mantling on the nest as well too, where he kind of gets down and ducks down and. Uh, doesn't know we share uh, his, uh, his catch as well. So it's, it's again, just another sign that it's a young uh, adult male. So continuing on, uh, you know, with their identification, you know, ospreys, of course, which makes them, uh, you know, uh, much better predators uh, and, you know, uh, they're much more adaptable to their environment just by uh, them being able to carry fish head first like this. And this just helps them be able to catch bigger fish and carry them longer distances uh, because they're, uh, you know, they're not fighting resistance in the wind so they can carry them uh, to their nest to feed their, their mate and their, their young as well too. So this is where they're especially adapted for this, uh, which makes them superior to bald eagles in every way, shape and form. Eagles are nothing to ospreys. So here are the two birds that I kind of mentioned before where ospreys are kind of confused by them with people along the shore with the eagle on the left and an osprey uh, in the same frame and then a black back gull. Uh, and, and both of these uh, images represent uh, kleptoparasitism. And this is where uh, it's basically theft by parasitism. So this is where these birds are harassing an osprey until it drops its catch, uh, where then it'll go and take its, its food from it, uh, and in some cases even midair, or it'll they'll let it hit the ground or in the water, and then they'll grab it. But ospreys are success, more successful uh, predator than than both of these species, so they have no problem going and catching another fish. So I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna kind of cruise past this one. I mean we know ospreys they're a predator, uh, they're highly adaptable, uh, they're especially adapted to catch uh, fish. 
uh, and consume fish. And of course, they definitely eat the eyes and the head first. That's the most nutritious part of the fish. Uh, and that zygodactyl adaptation allows them to catch, or sorry, to carry the fish head first. Uh, that's where you could see in the right-hand picture how the bird has that outermost toe that can reverse and oppose, where it could either, either have three forward uh, or two forward and two back. So very cool. Just their prey. Uh, ospreys will basically eat anything. We kind of refer to them as specialized generalists because they'll eat almost anything they can catch. Uh, they're more successful at catching bottom feeding fish though uh, than Pesivorous fish or Menhaden uh, or you know, uh, bluefish or striped bass or any other kind of uh, forage fish. All right, so now getting down to the nitty gritty and their reproduction. So ospreys are monogamous. So that means they mate for life. Uh, ospreys are still returning from their wintering grounds, which is in Northern South America. Uh, so here birds come back, they spruce up nests, uh, they copulate and usually eggs uh, are laid in, in mid to late April. Uh, and then they usually hatch after about 36 to 40 days, uh, especially along the Atlantic coastal zone. Uh, so usually around Memorial Day is when I like to say eggs start to hatch, or that's when we start hatch watch for the most part. Uh, and, uh, you know, something cool just to see during this time of year, if you end up going out to a nest site uh, and, you know, are logging uh, your observations of activity at nests is to look for their courtship displays. And this is where the male does a high undulating flight over the nest. Uh, and that's where you could see a picture of it over on the right hand side here where they do this flight right over a nest. They're courting the female, they're building their pair bond or strengthening their pair bond. Uh, and usually he does that after a successful hunt. So he usually has a half eaten fish maybe, or he could be carrying nesting material. And uh, this is just something really cool to see because they also do it with a very high pitched uh, call that's very distinctive and he does that uh, undulating flight over the over the nest and then he stops and hovers at times. Uh, so it's just really, really cool to watch if you ever do get a chance to, to see it. It's one of those things that will just give you like a wow, you know, it's pretty cool. Even, even for me, it's cool. <laughs> and I've worked with Ospreys for 16 years. Uh, so um, after uh, the eggs are incubated for around 40 days, they hatch in the order they're laid. So that's asynchronous hatching. And that's basically uh, a natural adaptation. Uh, you know, it's basically uh, a way that ensures that the, uh, the firstborn uh, has the best chance of surviving to, uh, you know, to fledge and hopefully reach adulthood. And, you know, primarily that's, uh, you know, it's basically, you know, in certain areas where there's not enough prey, we might see brood reduction, uh, but luckily we don't really see that that much in New Jersey. Uh, in certain other areas where you know there are you know uh, shortages of prey or fish, then we might see more brood reduction, but uh, we don't see that here as much. So usually we see nests with two or three young, which is great. It means we have we're doing a great job of uh, protecting the coast of New Jersey uh, and our forage fish, but. Uh, it, certain years, you know, certain things might happen weather-wise and fish, you know, uh, abundance may be down and that's where we could see it. Uh, so that oldest young has the best chance of surviving. Uh, so that's why we, you know, we see that. And again, it's another reason why ospreys are so adaptable to, you know, so many different parts of the world. But young, uh, when they hatch, they're semi-altricial, which means that they're downy. Uh, their eyes are open, but they need very close parental care. Uh, they can't just walk around and, and go feed themselves. They have to be fed and kept warm by the adults. Uh, so they need that very close parental care, uh, which is over around the, you know, the first you know, three weeks at least uh, until they can really start sitting up. Like you can see in the bottom picture here where it says only 50% of young ospreys reach adulthood. Uh, those young are, are probably around like three to four weeks old. And that's when they start looking up They're, you know, they're looking at planes flying overhead, other birds, and more than likely that's the time when most volunteers should get out to, to look at nests because that's when you'll see the little bobbleheads poking around and, or a feeding and, and then you can determine how many young there are uh, in a nest. So when we go out and do surveys, uh, we never know what we might find. And usually those surveys are done uh, in late June and early July. And that's when a lot of uh, your surveys should be done as well too. But really they can happen uh, anytime before then and anytime after as well. 
Uh, but if you, you know, but during that time, you never know what you might see unless you know when they're incubating and know when to expect hatching. Uh, but these are all pictures taken when we go out and do surveys in late June and early July. And this is just a, a little, you know, slide just showing their progression here, uh, you know, especially with their feather development. And this is just a way that we use, uh, you know, for me, it's all in my head. Uh, but, you know, I just like to show this as a, a little guide here, just showing how old these birds are, uh, you know, by their feather development, which you could see here. And pretty much the main way to to really classify their age is with their, it's with their body feathers. Uh, we don't measure their wing size or, uh, you know, the thickness of their, uh, you know, uh, their legs or anything like that. We just look at their feather development and that's when we can tell how, that's how we can tell how old they are. And that's pretty much with their body feathers that you see uh, on their backs. So when they get to be around three weeks old, that's when their, their body feathers come out of pin and you can see the buff feather tips like uh, in that picture there when the bird is uh, 21 days old. So, and I'm just gonna cruise through here with some pictures just showing hatchlings uh, to, um, you know, the three to four week old right here on a nest. And then we have your, your six to seven week old birds right here. And this is when they're much more visible on nests and easy to distinguish uh, when you go out and, and observe a nest. More so when they're around this age, and this is just because I'm up at the nest, but you know, they're sleepy babies. They love to just lay down, uh, you know, and sleep a lot, right? What do babies do? They eat and sleep. Uh, well, that's what ospreys do too when they're babies. But uh, when we go up to do surveys at nests, when I climb up to them with a ladder, uh, then they pretty much play dead. So that's, uh, people have seen me banding live on Facebook or, or on YouTube and they're like, oh my gosh, you're killing the babies, they're dead. No, they're just playing dead. You know, they do a good job playing possum. So continuing on here, that's just an adult male. Uh, I just have some slides about the history of, of decline of ospreys. I'm gonna kind of skip over this because uh, you know, it's non-essential. <laughs> it's important, but it's not essential tonight. Uh, so talking more about uh, what you guys will do and everything. Uh, so Osprey Watch. So this is a place uh, where you'll go to enter your data. Uh, so Osprey Watch is, uh, is run by the Center for Conservation Biology. They're out of uh, Virginia. So this is a, a site where we mapped all known osprey nests back in 2013. And this was just a way of us, uh, you know, kind of publicly mapping all osprey nests in New Jersey to basically, you know, get more people to, uh, you know, record observations and activity at nests uh, because the state, you know, wasn't going to do helicopter surveys, uh, you know, to census the entire population. Uh, so instead, we would rely on citizen scientists like yourselves uh, to, to basically, you know, uh, keep track of the health of the population. So in all of this, you know, like I can send an email with, you know, kind of instructions on where to go and like how to sign up. It's very easy, uh, you know, uh, to sign up, um, you know, and you'll see that we have a monitoring group on here. It's called New Jersey Osprey Project. Uh, if you would click on, if you would like zoom in on, Osp on New Jersey, which I'll even do once I end this little slideshow here, uh, just to show you how you can see uh, nest in New Jersey when you click on one and, and where you'd enter, enter data and everything. So kind of just continuing on, I'm just gonna skip over these slides. Where do ospreys nest? They nest everywhere, even in trees and even on the ground like this cool nest right here. Uh, or on crab pots that wash up uh, on the salt marsh. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, so what we do to monitor and manage ospreys, so myself and, and a core group of volunteers, uh, our osprey banders, we go out and do nest surveys on the ground where we use ladders. Uh, you guys won't be actually going up to nests, you'll be viewing them from a distance. So. Uh, you know, instead of using a ladder, you'll need like binoculars or a camera or a spotting scope uh, to be able to look at a nest to determine, uh, you know, what's in it. So when we go up to nests, uh, you know, we, you know, we determine the number of young that are produced and you guys will pretty much be determining that as well too, just from a distance. So when we look at a nest, a lot of times, like I said, they, they play dead. Uh, so they're kind of hard to see, uh, but when they get to be bigger, uh, they, they can stand up uh, like, like these birds right here. And they're much easier uh, to see from a distance as well. 
So I'm just gonna exit my slideshow and see if I can skip ahead. So let's see, I have, I have lots of pictures of ospreys entangled or with trash, which is, uh, you know, something becoming much more of a concern these days with just all the plastic marine debris out there. So I'll just highlight on this. Uh, so this is uh, Project Red Band. And I just want to talk about this real quick because uh, you might see Red Band at Ospreys up in your area. Actually, we have one, uh, ooh, where is it nesting? Uh, I think it's right in Allenhurst, I believe. We have a female nesting up there who's red banded. So Project Red Band is a, a project we started uh, back in 2014. This is a little side project, uh, you know, basically to help uh, learn more about our ospreys when they're alive. So the bands uh, which we put on ospreys are a tool for us to be able to track them uh, with very little cost uh, and, you know, hopefully a lot of uh, impact if we get resettings of those uh, bands. And red bands are one, eight, one way for us to be able to do that because they can actually be red from a distance. So these auxiliary bands are red uh, and they're on, they should be, they're on the right leg. So uh, if you see an osprey with the red band, uh, then that means that bird originated from a nest on Barnegat Bay. So and if you're able to read the band, uh, then you could report that to me and USGS and then uh, we could tell you about its history, uh, and then we'll learn more about uh, that bird as well, uh, you know, as it, as it nests in New Jersey and uh, completes its life cycle. So, so we've banded close to 500 ospreys with red bands. So hopefully we'll see more of return this year. I think last year we had uh, around, I think it was around 35 resightings of red banded birds that were alive. So, which is pretty awesome. The most ever in the history of the project. Hey, Ben, we just have a couple of questions that people put in the chat room here. So yeah. um, the first question is, what are the natural enemies of adult ospreys? Uh, there aren't many. I, I was a volunteer to watch the nest and I was supposed to learn how to do this and I missed it. Um, we didn't even, you, you're not too late. <laughs> we have an osprey box right by my house. Yeah, so we're just asking people to please mute themselves if they can, please. Thanks. Yeah, so adults, I mean, they don't have too many natural predators, but, you know, great horned owls are muted, one. right? Yeah. You're not muted yet, yet, Carol. I'm not? No, now you are. Thank you. So the other, the other predators uh, are bald eagles. I mean, usually eagles uh, don't go after adult ospreys, you know, all the time. I mean, they're more ones who would, you know, uh, you know, parasitize them for their prey, or they would actually predate their young. And same with great horned owls. Uh, great horned owls are ones where when they predate a nest, usually they don't even eat the body, they just eat the head. And they, you, you know when a horned owl predated an osprey nest because you find the nestlings uh, nearby dead uh, with no head, uh, unfortunately. But this is even why, you know, if you watch nests now, you'll see at night, ospreys go and perch in trees. And they do that just for protection from, from predators like great horned owls, which are active at night. And then, uh, Ben, we have one other question. How do ospreys catch fish? Do they dive or do they skim on the water surface? Oh, yeah. I mean, ospreys are aerial predators, so they, don't, they usually don't forage a lot from a perch. So they, you know, they fly, they can hover, uh, and they dive, you know, feet first. Uh, there's some great pictures. Uh, if any of you are on Facebook, in, uh, it's called uh, Ospreys of New Jersey. Uh, there's a great group there with photographers posting pictures almost every day of ospreys. You'll see them in dives with their feet, you know, uh, feet first uh, going into the water and they can go into about a meter in depth. So they can totally emerge their bodies in the water uh, and, and somehow uh, emerge from the water carrying a, a fish. So very adaptable predators. All right, so now I'm gonna end my slideshow because there isn't too much else on here, or at least I'll see if I minimize that. Okay, so it stopped sharing, okay. So I'm just gonna go and share my whole screen, my desktop. So if anyone has any more questions then,
Uh, we actually have a question. I was going to ask this question too. This is from uh, Joseph Stark. So there's a lot of dead bunker washing up on the beaches here in Monmouth County. I think also down in, in Barnegat Bay a little bit too. Um, and the bunker supposedly, I think DEP just came out with um, with a statement saying that there's a, a, a disease or a fungus or something, a bacteria, I think it was, that's impacting the, the bunker or the Menhaden. Since ospreys eat a lot of Menhaden, is there any worry that maybe that would also have an impact that that uh, uh, fungus mm -hmm. or disease would have an impact on the on the ospreys? Or we yeah, I mean, it definitely could, you know, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, one of the main reasons ospreys have done so well is because, you know, there's been, you know, great quantities of a bunker here. And even this whole winter, you know, I mean, I have a couple of good friends who are, you know, real, you know, uh, like coastal guides and, and more fishermen, you know, where they always watch the, the bait fish and, and the bunker populations. And, you know, they've been pretty healthy, uh, at least more so down me, by me, you know, in Southern Barnegat Bay. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, any kind of fish kills, uh, you know, uh, will affect ospreys. But, you know, I think right now, you know, this is one of the seasons where, you know, when I've watched them, there's many different places where they can go and, and forage. And from what I've seen, I mean, a lot of them forage in inland coastal areas or inland coastal lakes uh, and the state even stocks trout for ospreys. So uh, they take advantage of that. And then it transitions into our spawning period for, you know, river herring and shad, uh, where of course then they, they forage on those as well. And then it isn't really until the nestling period. And that's, that's usually, you know, throughout June and July uh, that those are the most critical, you know, uh, periods when young need to eat, you know, multiple times a day. So they need to catch fish, you know, two to three times a day, or maybe more once they get to be bigger, uh, you know, to feel as hungry mouth. So, you know, depending on, you know, where these uh, fish kills are hap happening and, and the amount of bunker that are affected by it, then yeah, we might see some localized, you know, nest failures. Uh, and that'll be interesting to document, especially with you guys starting to, to watch more nests up in, up in the Raritan Bay area and Sandy Hook and, and Shrewsbury and Navasink, uh, all those areas, you know? So great question, yeah. Mm. You know, it's always one of those concerning things because, you know, other areas like the Chesapeake and even coastal Maine have had, uh, you know, some, you know, some declines in ospreys uh, or their productivity just from mm you know, uh, the shortages in, in bait fish, uh, you know, because of, you know, whatever, whether it's water quality issues uh, or just overfishing is always a threat, uh, you know, with omega protein, you know, coming out with giant persanes, uh, you know, to take out entire schools of, of bunker. Uh, all right, so I'm just zooming in on Osprey Watch. So Osprey Watch, the website is osprey-watch.org. And this is just a, a website where any of you can go on this map uh, right now uh, or later and view all known Osprey nests in New Jersey. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to use the map here to, uh, you know, kind of show you guys uh, the area, even though obviously you're probably more familiar with it than I am because I'm... Uh, this will be good. I am located down here in Bass River. So this is where I live. My home is right in Bass River. And these are my local ospreys down here and all over. So I pretty much monitor ospreys throughout the entire state, but the ones that I monitor with my boat, and I don't know if you could see my cursor moving here then too, but yeah, we see much from like, moving. you could see it. Yeah. yeah. So I pretty much uh, monitor nests from Atlantic City then all the way up to Point Pleasant. So those are all nests that I survey every summer by boat usually, and some I get to by land. Uh, and then we have volunteers that go and do uh, others, you know, down. Uh, so I have one volunteer that does Ventnor, Margate, and Ocean City down to Strathmere. I have another volunteer that does the Great Egg Harbor uh, watershed, so the Tuckahoe and Great Egg Harbor River. And then we have more volunteers that go down and do Avalon and Stone Harbor. Uh, and then some new volunteers doing Wildwood and Cape May, because I used to do that as well. And I'm glad to hand that off on somebody else. And then if you ever heard of Citizens United to protect the Morris River, uh, they monitor pretty much all the osprey nests on the Morris River. And you can see there's a lot of those. Uh, and then we have uh, Damon No uh, with the Nature Conservancy. He does a lot of the nests out here on the open uh, Delaware, um, Delaware Bay Shore. So, 
And then pretty much all the other ones that you see in between, uh, you know, up here on the, the Delaware River. Uh, and, you know, those are ones that we pretty much either get sightings from Osprey Watch or, uh, you know, other people like up here in northern New Jersey. I have a couple uh, Eagle Project volunteers now. Uh, where they, you know, where they monitor eagles up in this area. Now they also report on all these osprey watch, uh, ospreys over here, or all these ospreys on osprey watch, which is great. And then circling back around here, uh, up into the uh, meadowlands, then this is where we have like uh, uh, a couple groups up here, uh, a couple volunteers who watch those nests uh, related to like the uh, Hackensack River Keeper. Um, and then going down here by the Raritan River. Uh, this is where we have the Raritan River Keeper. Uh, they actually report on these nests because they're out there patrolling the river, which is great. So we have Bill who always reports on all those nests. So pretty much, uh, you know, and what I'll even do, you know, I mean, I know I'm kind of going over a lot today. Uh, and, uh, you know, there'll be more stuff to follow uh, and even some written description of this. And it's getting dark in my office here. I'll turn on this light uh, so you can still see me. But uh, so we don't have, so basically from Cheesequake State Park, uh, so all these nests uh, to the east along the Raritan Bay, uh, you know, none of those are really represented, uh, you know, much in our, in our reporting. So, you know, so all of those we'd want to have covered, uh, you know, Sandy Hook, this whole area, you know, there's around 30 nests, I believe, up there, uh, give or take a few. And then we come down here uh, to the Navasink, which we could see, you know, around maybe a dozen nests. Uh -huh. and, and these are just the ones that we knew about. A lot of these were probably mapped back. Uh, see, look, I mapped this one. Uh, I don't know why it popped up over here, but seven years ago uh, that that nest got mapped. Uh, you know, I think one of the other real things that we'd love to know as well is, are these nests still even there? You know, like, is there a nest still on this channel marker? Uh, you know, uh, or whatever, you know, or is this platform, you know, that's uh, at one of these locations, like, is it still there? And this looks like a nest that's on, uh, let's bring it up the boat ramp. Their map's a little glitchy right here, but it's making, making me click on the boat ramp. And some of them might be on, this is on a, uh, I believe this is on like a tower. So it's like a communications tower and you can see that right there. You know, so that's the other part side of this is, is you know determining if these are still you know active nest sites uh, for ospreys, and then we go down to the Shrewsbury down here. Uh, again, we could see more here. Uh, big cluster at Fort Monmouth, as you can see, and these are actually monitored by uh, you know staff who are in charge of the whole uh, turnover at the site. So they actually monitor these sites. So going in there. Uh, won't really be necessary. So more of the con more effort should be concentrated around the surrounding area. Uh, and then we could see we have a few more down to the south into Asbury and, and Bradley Beach and, you know, and then all the way down to uh, Seagirt and Manasquan. And so any of these nests pretty much where my surveys stop. And even if anyone, if these are, you know, if anyone lives in, in uh, you know, Point Pleasant, uh, you could certainly check on these nests as well down to, uh, you know, Beaver Dam Creek here uh, because I do get to them usually by boat, but uh, sometimes I might not get there uh, depending on the weather and everything. Hey, ben, so just the opposite. What happens if we find like an osprey nest that's not on the map? How do we report the new osprey nest? Well, yeah, I mean, great question. Uh, so when you lo actually log into Osprey Watch, see I'm logged in here. Uh, so when you go, when you go into Osprey Watch, see, this is, I, I have a monitor group on here, so it might look a little bit different, but this is where you can see what nests I've updated. These are all the, so you could basically, when you go into Osprey Watch and, you know, depending on where you want to, you know, where you want to watch nests or report on nests, you can look at an area and you can, you know, say, click on a nest and, I'll open this nest and you can click to uh, follow it and I'm already following it. So, uh, but that's where then you could follow it and it'll be in your list of nests down here. So that's one way where you can do that. But then to, you can see here where it says report a new nest. 
So this is basically where you go into Osprey Watch, you click report a new nest, and then you're, you're given this map, right? So then you basically drag this to where the, the nest is. And I'll, I'll do it, but I won't finalize it. You know, I won't hit save. <laughs> They'll be like, what? Uh, you know, so then, uh, you know, if we have a new nest here, uh, you know, let's say we're by Leonardo, the State Park, or the state marina, right? You know, then, you know, whatever. We could say, oh, it's on a telephone pole or we put in a new platform, right? So even the nests, like if you guys are putting in new nests and then they become occupied, you can map it. You can give it whatever, you know, name you want. You could say like Joe's nest, right? Because then I can always change this later. Uh, and then you select what it is, uh, you know, an Osprey nest platform, you can describe it like, you know, say uh, installed uh, April 4th or April 4, 2021. Uh, you know, if there's a nest, they have this in case there's a nest cam on it. Uh, so you could always put in the URL for that. And then you could click add to the New Jersey Osprey project monitoring group. And that's as simple as that. And then it's created. And then you pretty much see this where then it's, it's here. And, uh, you know, so then you can see, uh, actually, I'll go back to a different one, where then you could see previous years, uh, once, you know, for older nests, uh, you know, that have had nest activity reported. So let's see here, I'll go to one where I know that there's been a bunch. Uh, so, uh, you know, actually using one of the ones on like the Raritan. Because I know that Bill reports on all these. So that's where we can go back. You see, I originally mapped it in 2013. Then we have 2016. Well, it doesn't say anything, but there you go. Then 2018, we have the nest was occupied and then it's active and there was two nestings. And you can post photos. So you could even see that Bill posted some photos. You could actually see the nest. And you could also, if you go and watch multiple times during the season, then you can, you know, put, uh, um, you know, uh, journal entries or in the diary there. Uh, which is just a, another great way uh, to be able to, to track the nest. So basically, uh, you know, then kind of getting down to the, the nitty gritty then, you know, so, so if you go out and, and make observations at a nest, uh, you know, you'll want to uh, do that, you know, probably starting, uh, you know, later this month or in early May, and that's when incubation should begin. And, uh, you know, when, and pretty much when you go out and look at a nest, you'll, you might not see anything or you'll have to look closely because you'll, you won't see much activity. You'll see maybe the bird's head just spinning around because that's what they're sitting low on eggs. And when you see an osprey sitting low on eggs, you know, that means they're of course incubating. Uh, and it's not until they have young that they're moving around. You'll see feeding on the nest. And, uh, you know, I can, I can send pictures of all of these different stages as well, too, just so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. And that's where then you can come on to the website here and then report your observations. And, you know, so when you go into, I'm just going to, let's see here, I'm going to click on a, so when I go on here, so let's just say I'm going to create an activity report. All right, so then that's where I go on to a nest that's by my house, you know, so it says the date of the pair arrival. I'm not gonna put anything because I don't know when they arrived, unless you really do know when they arrived, then you can put that, but I don't. Uh, so I'm not gonna put anything. So, and it does have a description underneath it here, which is great. So this is where if the nest is occupied, that means that the, adult, the adults are on the nest. So uh, that's when the nest is occupied. The nest isn't active until they actually have eggs. So that's when a nest is officially active. Um, so that's where if I know when they uh, laid eggs, then I can indicate a date and for initiating incubation. And then hatching is then just another date when you can indicate when the eggs hatch. And none of this is really required. Uh, it is good information, no doubt. You know, if anyone does have more time to spend more time on nests, say going once a week, say if you're only watching a couple nests by your house, you know, have, gaining all this information is, is definitely spectacular. Me, when I go out and do surveys, I usually visit a nest once. Uh, so I usually have a harder time figuring out what happened if there's a pair and nothing in the nest. I'm like, hmm, yeah, you know, could have failed. 
uh, you know, could have been a new pair, could have been the weather, could have been predated, much harder to figure that out. When you watch, you know, over uh, the, the entire season, I think you'll know more than I will know for sure. Uh, but uh, okay, so when you go to a nest and then you, know, you see young, you report the number of young. Uh, and, and this is really one of the main things that's, uh, you know, needed, you know, is determining how many young are produced. So, and of course you'd have zero for no young, like they failed. Uh, and you could also indicate that the nest failed here as well too, by picking one of the, the drop downs. And you can even write in if nothing's listed there. Uh, Cause sometimes it's really hard to determine what the nest might have failed from, but say there is like a crazy storm, you know, a, a mother's day nor'easter, right? And the nest blows over uh, and the eggs are lost. Well, then we know that the nest was destroyed during a storm, you put zero and then you, uh, you know, create activity. Uh, and then everything else here is just related to, to fledging. So once the birds leave the nest or make their, their first flight, then you can report that they fledged. Ben, Sue, Sue brings up a good question then uh, that's sort of related. So if we, if we go out and we see that there is a problem with the nest, it is down, or maybe the babies fell out of the nest or something, yep. uh, is there anything we could do? Well, yeah, definitely. Great question. Uh, I mean, yeah, all of this as well are things that, you know, we can definitely talk about later on as well, too, uh, once we get to that point. But yes, you know, a lot of times after a storm, you know, like even like I just mentioned, say, you know, it's late June, we know that the nest has maybe three to three to four. Oh, my gosh, has four nestlings in it. And, uh, you know, you're, you go out to check the nest after the storm and you see a couple of them on the ground. Uh, yes, you know, we definitely want to act. Uh, there are definitely things we can do. Uh, and one of them is, is grabbing the young and putting them in a box so they can stay calm. And of course, you'll probably be, be calling someone like me, <laughs> uh, you know, to, to guide you in the right direction. But, you know, again, uh, you know, I'll probably put this in a, a little document just kind of saying, you know, for survey methods uh, with instructions on what to do and how to act in those situations. Because even for us, there's many different things that we can do, uh, you know, whether we want to, you know, try and, and place them in another nest, which is one of them. Uh, but it all depends on whether they don't have any injuries. So a lot of times, you know, we might want to actually look at them and examine them to see if they have any fractures. Uh, so we might even want to have them transported to a rehabilitator. And then we'll try and put them either back in the same nest, or if we can't get to it, then we could foster them uh, potentially into other nests as well. So I think even more of this stuff we could talk about in person too, like, you know, looking at a nest, uh, you know, with, with optics and stuff when we maybe have young, uh, you know, so uh, in early June or something. Uh, so we have cool things to look at and, you know, I can help give everyone more information, but I'll definitely have, uh, you know, some co key contacts as well. Like me, uh, there's also a hotline for DEP. Like if you would see anyone destroying a nest, uh, that's something even to watch out for right now. Uh, we're actually installing a platform tomorrow morning because a homeowner on Long Beach Island decided to remove a platform, which was active uh, for many years uh, because it was interfering with their construction project. Uh, so, uh, you know, so, hey, you know, we have to deal with this stuff on a case by case basis. But, yeah, there are routes we can take uh, and, you know, to to fix issues like this and, and ospreys and their nests are protected, uh, but more so they're protected when they have eggs or young. Ben, uh, Marissa has a question about timing. Is there an ideal time of day that we should go out to do our monitoring? Great question, yeah. I mean, I think the, the times of day when uh, it's probably the, you know, the hardest, I guess, is the middle of the day. If it's, especially if it's really hot, they're probably gonna be laying low, the female might be shading them, but uh, you know, I, so I think the best times are, are probably early morning. Uh, and I don't, I'm not talking about like five or 6 a.m., but maybe like seven, eight o'clock. Uh, you know, that's when we might catch feeding at a nest or, you know, say an incubation exchange. Uh, but uh, I don't think there's any bad time. Uh, it's, it's the time that you're available, I think, you know. I mean, I'm not expecting anyone to like quit their job and sit at a nest all day long. You know, you, you, you do what you can uh, and it'll work. You know, uh, so I think whenever time you can devote to it, you know, then that's great, you know, uh, but 
you know, so whether you want to make uh, one trip once a week uh, or once every two weeks, I think that's fine. You know, I'm not, uh, you know, trying to make everyone be out there all the time, you know, so yeah. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> There's no bad time. Um, and then uh, George, George wants to know if, if he goes monitoring the Ospreys at Sandy Hook, um, does he have to pay for parking? <laughs> I, <don't... laughs> I think he might well, have to. You know, so uh, yeah, I don't know, you know, with, with all of you, uh, you know, we, we might want to, you know, kind of, you know, there might be a way to break down the nests by, you know, region, uh, you know, and, and I have my, my Google Earth map here, which I should bring up, you know, so I don't know, you know, you know, say if, if someone lives right outside the park, if it's easier for them to go in, you know, and, and you know, to do half or because there's a lot here, you know, they'll keep you busy. I mean, <laughs> you're not going to be in here for a couple hours. It's going to be uh, you know, definitely a half day uh, venture, you know, to go through here. And a lot of these are probably even hard to get to as well, too. So, you know, I think with whatever happens at, um, you know, uh, Sandy Hook will be, you know, we'll have some involvement with the, the National Park Service, uh, because, you know, to get, you know, to have you to have the volunteer or the surveyor with some kind of placard saying that they're there kind of on official business, uh, and, uh, you know, to state what you're doing and, you know, cause some of these areas, uh, you know, are definitely even harder to get to. And, and yeah, if you're going to go and park everywhere and, and walk to all these places, you know, you're going to be busy. So there might even be a couple of you that want to help with Sandy Hook, uh, you know, but also we can get some national park service, uh, staff or seasonals, which I'm hoping to maybe, uh, help with their, that area as well. But I have no idea about parking. So, uh, you know, I could ask. <laughs> Um, nonprofits on uh, right there like the littoral society and like like they i can't believe they don't monitor those nests i'm fat and it's amazing i mean <laughs> they used to it was uh Jeannie hauser uh you know she used to monitor the nests and she was uh you know she worked for the park service and it was just uh -huh. something that she's always done and she retired and Wow. Uh, the woman Patty there, I tried emailing her and again and again, and, you know, I, I needed to try calling now uh, or go above her to, to yeah. talk to whoever's in charge just to, you know, because they have data that goes back to the to the 70s, you wow. know, so, uh, you know, I don't know if they see Ospreys as a hindrance there because they nest in the buildings and they cause <laughs> them issues with redoing or, you know, mm -hmm maintaining some of those old buildings at like Fort Hancock and everything. So you can see all the ones on the houses here. Oh yeah, I've seen them all, yeah, for sure. So yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, like literally like the Littoral Society, that's where their office is, like they can't, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just amazing. Like get an intern, just set them out for the day, you know? Right, yeah, right. I mean, I've never really asked them but they've never really shown any interest. So yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> yep. Anyway, sorry. Um, no, yeah, yep, definitely. <laughs> digressing yep well yeah you know and even uh cheesequake is another area where there's a bunch of nests and some of these are a little you know uh they're accessible you know by land i mean i I've, we replaced a bunch of these with an eagle scout a couple of years ago and we walked you know we drove in a distance and we dropped off the platforms and walked it out so you can definitely you know walk in this trail and, and make observations at these so you know if someone would do these they'd be a great area I mean, at least they're they're somewhat accessible to see. And same with over here, with the nest here along this. This is a little trail, and then one here, and then you could probably get eyeballs on on these ones, uh, you know. And and you know, over here at the marina, I think this is Cheesequake uh, Marina with the nest platform that's there. And there might be other nests. I mean, I you know, a right. lot of times how I find nests is I go, hmm, 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 you know, if I need something to do, right, I can just <laughs> drag and you know, look along the shoreline and I can find a nest platform. Right. So, and then I map it, so. But yeah, so I think most monitoring, you know, so we have some time for me to write up some more information and get it to you all. And I'm happy to do another one of these uh, or, you know, if anyone has any questions of me, I can, you can always shoot me an email uh, and, 
you know, I think we could definitely meet in person at Sandy Hook or, you know, anywhere else where there's a couple of nests that we can see, uh, you know, from a, a land-based uh, position and, you know, make some observations together and, you know, make sure everyone's on the same page. Okay, so Ben, before we go, so the, the first thing that people should do is go on to Osprey Watch? Or, or, uh, yeah, what, yeah, what, definitely. What I would go on there that? and make a login. All right. I mean, you know, I'll have to see, uh, you know, there are, there are ways to like make groups on here. I don't know how we do that. Uh, I'll have to see, but yeah, so you're going to want to go in and let's see here. I guess I have to log out. I'll log out and, and basically, yeah, become a watcher. There you go. So you, you click on the top menu bar where it says become a watcher. So you become a watcher. You could select your little, uh, you know, uh, icon here, your Osprey icon, and then you can, you, I'll have to see here, see if I log in, let's see how you can just find New Jersey Osprey Project. I think even if you click on any nest in New Jersey, you'll find New Jersey Osprey Project. And then do you, do you, once you're registered, can you like pick a nest then to monitor? Is that how well, it works? Yeah, I, you know, basically, I don't know how everyone wants to divvy up who monitors what nest, you know, because we want to make sure that people aren't monitoring, you know, if everybody lives in Union Beach, be like, well, I want to monitor this one. Well, I want to monitor this one. <laughs> and I don't think there's anything bad with that. I think what we should do is, uh, you know, have people either reach out to me to say they want to help in South Amboy or, you know, Cheesequake or Keensburg. And then we can kind of divvy it up and see where people, where everyone's interested. You know, where, you know, where is everyone located? Is, does everyone want to do just the base shore? Does no one want to do the Navisink and, and Shrewsbury, something like that before, you know, before we go and pick specific nests, you know, it's kind of expressing an area of interest. Cause I know there's some people, they just want to like monitor one nest or two. That's nests. fine. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That, yeah. And if it's the one behind their house, I mean, or, or wherever that makes the most sense. So they can definitely do that. You know, if, if I live, uh, you know, right here in, in this neighborhood, right? And, uh, you know, this nest is right behind my house, then yeah, you know, no doubt, you know, you can log into Osprey Watch, you can click on this nest to open it, follow it, and then you can start reporting your activity right in here for sure. Yep. I think the key thing is just when you go in here, it's not, oh, I'm going to go and map my nest. You know, it, it's going and looking at existing nests first. And if it's not there, then we map it. Because in many cases, you know, uh, we might see that, uh, see, here's one that's not in our project. Uh, but, uh, you know, it might be like, oh, I'm going to go map my nest in my backyard where the, someone might drop a pin next to this existing nest. We want to, we don't want to have five duplicate nests or even two duplicates or, or one in an area. It's, you know, looking to see what's there first. And then if it's not there, then we map it. And if anyone needs help mapping a nest, uh, you know, I can map it for you and, you know, and then it'll be there. All right, so we still even have time to figure out if, you know, how far people wanna go, you know, so you all can let me know, all right? And, you know, ideally I'd love to have more nests, you know, in, in other areas covered as well too, uh, you know, depending on how much help we have. All right. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to um, I'm going to suggest that people, if they want to help out, to register on Osprey Watch, and then I'm going to share your email with everybody, Ben, and they can email you, especially if they want to do like a, a like a batch of Osprey nests. Yeah. Monitor, you know, if they want to monitor Sandy Hook or you know like a large area to, to yeah. reach out to you and let you know. That sounds great. Okay. Uh, any, let's see, any other questions? Uh, um, do you need any special equipment to monitor the Ospreys? I mean, you know, s the main ones are going to be optics, yeah. binoculars, or a spotting scope, or if you have a camera with like a telephoto lens, it's just something to visually help you see into the nest. Because you, I mean, you might be able to see with your naked eye, but you're going to see better you know, with optics. 
Yeah. I mean, I only have binoculars, like, but by me, like I, you know, the ones in Asbury Park in the high school, they're so high up. Like, I don't know. Oh yeah. <laughs> they're really right. hard to see. Up there. Yeah. Right. And those, you know, those, you might not be able to see anything until the young get to be yeah. six, seven weeks old. And yeah. that sometimes that's all I use too. I go out and do a nest survey, even by boat and I just keep my distance and, you know, I just keep watching the nest until I see, you know, one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five birds on it. And I'm like, okay, there's three young and two adults. So, yeah. Uh, hi, Ben. I know yeah. you hear me. Listen, um, I know, like, over, we put a new one up in the Aberdeen, and uh, they, they put numbers on it. I know he's giving it. I go up there a number. I went up there like a, a week after we put the nest in, and there were two ospreys already in the nest. Oh, great. Uh, and yeah. I know that area, when we did it, but farther down towards the ocean area, the bay area, there was two nests there. One was there for years, and one is like really obsolete. I don't see nothing happen there. I think they built too many ball fields and, and stuff too close, and I don't think they like that too much. Oh, yeah. I know the I know the nest up in the I go there every day along the trail on uh, Jersey Street in the on uh, Union Beach and I counted five. And out of the five, there are three that uh, the birds are in. All yeah. right. And some of them you can't see when you gotta walk through it. You really gotta walk through a certain angle to see them, you know, right. with, the, with my glasses on. Yep. So well, my thing is, I know uh, with Joe, the last ones we put up, we put numbers on it. So I know, I guess that helps is we give the number on the nest that they, we put on the pole. We put numbers on them. That might help uh, out. Well, yeah, uh, the nest numbers, that's, <laughs> that's a good point. I mean, we have so many different nest numbers. Uh, you know, I think it's fine locally to have numbers, but every nest gets assigned a number by the quad. So this is just what was done from when I started working with Ospreys with how they did it with helicopters because they would have a topo map. I mean, literally I can reach back here. You know, yeah. So they used to fly, they used to fly and they'd have topo maps and I still have them where then they'd be like flying and they'd be like, oh, there's an Osprey nest. And they would drop, they would mark a point on the map and then these quads all have numbers. So then the nest name or the ID is from the quad. So this one's uh, 145. So if a nest was found on that quad, then it would be 145. And depending on where on the quad, it would then get a alpha code, whether it's A, B, C, or D. Uh, so it would be like 145A and then one for the first one. And the second one would be two and then three and then four. So that's kind of how we assign nest numbers for nests. And then there's Osprey Watch, where then they have their own numbers, which is basically like their URL. So I think, you know, one of the ways, like if you're out in the field, uh, you know, yeah, I could produce maps. I mean, I could make maps all day long uh, that, you know, you could look at. I mean, I could even make a custom Google map that I could share with everyone and you could bring it up on your phone. So then you can see, you know, and, and I even have it on my phone where it's like, I can zoom in on the, where you are. And then, you know, you can see what the nest number is, which might not be as quirky as Osprey watch. Sometimes Osprey watch, it's like, I could bring it up on my mobile and you saw me even just having trouble on my computer here, how I was trying to click on certain things and it would jump around with Google maps. I can have it. So it just opens up in Google maps and you can see the nest numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, all this will figure out, you know, uh, moving forward, uh, but it'll be nest numbers that either we give or with Osprey Watch numbers. And it'll probably, if you're going to be entering data on Osprey Watch, you'll probably use the Osprey Watch number. But yes, there's always confusing nest numbers for everything. Uh, you know, I mean, do you get people that like, uh, a number of people say, oh, oh do the same one? Uh, I mean, uh -huh. there are some people where they, I mean, I, mean, I don't know if we, uh, we do have some people that might report on the same nest, uh, you know, and, and that's fine. You know, it's just more people reaffirming what the other person saw. It, it won't be counted as like duplicate entries, you know, uh, or duplicate nests, especially with Osprey Watch. It'll just be another observation over top of it. And, it, you know, when, if you go in there too, you'll see somebody else's update, you know, if, if they put it in there. 
uh, you know, under their username. And then I'll see it as well, too. All right. All right. Okay, guys, any other questions? Thanks, Ben, for coming out. Appreciate it. Yeah, Just definitely. Thanks, thanks for joining us tonight. Be yeah. your home. Yeah, happy to have the help and, you know, happy to get everyone in, engaged and Osprey watching and, you know, let's meet up in the field. Yeah, very exciting. Good information. I learned a lot uh, about Ospreys tonight. So thanks for sharing your knowledge, your great knowledge about Ospreys, Ben. Yeah. Really good stuff. Yeah. Um, All right, thank you. We'll keep in touch, Ben. And uh, thanks, sure. everybody, for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Thanks yep, I'll be in touch soon. Have a good night. Take care. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.